Okay, welcome to another uh, Six Patterns video. My name is Max. I'm Kevin. And today we're going to go through perhaps a pattern four pattern case. Pattern four, important. A very important case, a very important pattern. Often has some overlap with some acute lung injury I find in my practice. Because right. you often get those polyps of organizing pneumonia prol proliferating within the air spaces. Yeah. Acute lung injury overlap with, al with alveolar filling. Pattern. They go hand in glove, Max. Remember, yeah. we put the pattern one on the poster. If you look behind me, we put pattern one in the upper left corner. But pattern four is right next to it in the upper right corner. And after you go through pattern one and it organizes in acute injury, you can go to pattern two, fibrosis. So you can work your way down through the poster in a, in a way that sort of reflects the way injury and repair actually work. You mean you didn't just throw them up there? <laughs> we tried that and it didn't work <laughs> it didn't very work. well. People kept saying, shouldn't there be some logical sequence here? What do we do next? <laughs> okay, back to this case. Yep. Low power, as we always do. Pink or blue? Looks pink. Very pink biopsy. We can go to higher power. Wow. It looks like a big nodule of pink in the middle, but it's not really a nodule, is it? Yeah, because I think I can still see some alveolar walls in the background there. So this pink is really coming from stuff in the alveolar spaces. Exactly. Now, I'll tell you that my experience is pathologists get this, typically. They get it because it is such a classical appearance of stuff in the alveolar space, which is a prototype for alveolar filling. It is the hallmark of alveolar filling pattern for sure. So here we have an alveolar wall. There's another alveolar wall here. And here is the alveolar space, chock full of, how would you describe that? Well, it kind of looks like my mother's mashed potatoes, if they were pink. Dyed green, dyed, dyed <laughs> pink, right? <laughs> yeah, because it's kind of granular, and then it's got some, some inclusions. These guys here. The key about PAP is it should look granular to exactly. begin with. Not silky smooth, but granular. And then you should see these bigger chunks, which are the mashed potatoes that didn't get fully crushed when mashed potatoes are made by hand. Exactly. So the classic pink mashed potatoes, grandmother's mashed potatoes, of pulmonary alveolar proteinosis, the prototype of the alveolar filling. And look at this in the biopsy. Do you see, you know, we focus on the filling, right? Like a pie, the yummy filling. But look around the edges of the filling. Can you see those white cracks? Yeah. Those white cracks are another hallmark of alveolar prognosis because this material in processing pulls away from the alveolar walls and leaves these slits. Exactly. So granular material, pink inclusions, retraction slits. Classic. Now, what if you had a biopsy from over in this area where you really didn't have much in the way of uh, material filling the alveolar spaces. Classic. So you expect to see a patchy distribution of alveolar prognosis. Now granted you can have a small biopsy, the entire biopsy is alveolar prognosis, but more typically even a transbronchial biopsy, parts of the biopsy may not have alveolar filling with alveolar prognosis. And we get these cases sent to us saying I thought it was, but I couldn't rationalize the absence of alveolar filling in parts of the biopsy. But the imaging for this explains exactly why you have some areas that are involved and some areas that aren't. Because the imaging is the classic crazy paving pattern. It is crazy. Which means there's some lobules that are completely involved and they look white on the CT scan. And other lobules not involved at all. And they look dark on the and, CT scan. And they're very sharply demarcated from each other. So in the biopsy, you could expect to see some alveoli with nothing and right next door, alveolar prognosis. And what exactly is demarcating, de demarcating, demarcating them from one another? Well, it doesn't seem to be much. It's just like a happenstance of whether this stuff is in the alveolar space or not. It's probably right. related to the terminal airway. Right, the, the terminal lobule, right? Because the interlobular septum will keep the material out of one lobule, but not the, Good point. the, the adjacent lobule. Good point. So what's the importance of this diagnosis? Well, there's a bunch of things. First of all, you gotta make sure it's not infection related alveolar prognosis. People don't think of that. Always. Secondary alveolar Exactly. Prognosis. 
So always do special stains, at least an acid fast and a silver stain. And we say this all the time in lung biopsies because if you're going to look at lung biopsies regularly, you've got to get good at looking at AFB and GMS stains. As much as you don't like it. No one likes it, but you've got to get good at it. And what we find is don't start screening the slide like a cytology specimen from one end to the other. Be like Willie Sutton. The money's in the bank. Go to the bank. So when you find a disease, go to where the disease is most prominent in the biopsy to look for organisms. That's where you should spend most of your time looking. The other significance of this diagnosis is that the treatment is an interesting treatment, whole lung lavage, which is not done for very many other diagnoses aside from this. So and it's done under anesthesia, so it's not, it's not a little deal, it's a big deal. Right. You can also treat with anti-GM CSF. Exactly. Because this, this disease is, is driven uh, by an abnormality in GMCSF. And that's a pathophysiology lesson that's best learned from the textbook. Exactly. <laughs> okay, so I think that sums it up for alveolar filling. Don't forget to comment and like and subscribe below. And 